So, time then for the press preview. It's our first look at what is on tomorrow's front pages. Tonight, we'll check out the headlines with Daily Mirror columnist Susie Boniface and the editor of the Jewish Chronicle, Jake Wallace-Simons. They'll be with us from now until just before midnight. Great to see you here in the studio. We shall chat in a moment after we've had a look at some of those front pages for you. Big fat lies. Donald Trump's prison mugshot is on the front of Susie's paper, The Mirror, which reports that he is using it to raise money for his campaign to win back the White House. Same picture on the front of the Daily Star, their headline, Donald Grump. Growing fears that baby killer nurse Lucy Letby may have claimed more victims leads the Telegraph with two more families demanding an investigation into the deaths of their children at the hospital where Letby worked. Let's bring in tomorrow's eye, leading with an exclusive suggesting that a suspect in the downing of the Wagner Group leader's plane in Russia is also connected to the poisoning of Putin critic Sergei Skripal and his daughter in Salisbury back in 2018. The Daily Mail has the story of a father of three suspected to have been killed in his home by a gang trying to steal his dog. And in fact, it's uh, also the top story on the front of tomorrow's Daily Express. The resignation of the head of the British Museum over a series of thefts of valuable artefacts is the top story in The Guardian. While The Times says scientists have discovered that a new generation of weight loss injections are more successful at treating heart failure than any other method so far. And here's your FT for tomorrow, reporting that the Chancellor is planning help in his autumn statement for people with mental health issues to get them into work and off benefits. And as always, uh, we remind you that you can scan that QR code that you see on screen during the programme. Check out the front pages of tomorrow's papers while you watch us discussing them. And to do that, Susie Boniface and Jake Wallace-Simons. So, let's get cracking. Why don't we start with uh, Trump, Susie, front of the Times. In fact, that uh, image, unsurprisingly, on the front of every paper, uh, there it is. Uh, and what an image it is. Yeah, orange steel. Phew. Um, that man's put... Uh... So much orange makeup on, uh, I'm surprised the camera actually picked it up. He obviously has practiced it, but the thing is that although this, this kind of face is glaring out of us, at, at, out of every national newspaper and probably newspapers around the world, and everyone's just going to be seeing this, um, it's, it is iconic and it's going to become even more so probably as, as days go by. Um, but there is so much about this which is historic. We've never seen a president indicted like this, or an ex-president. Um, when world leaders have ever been arrested, it's usually because there's been an armed insurrection against them as opposed to they've led one. Um, and he's facing in total more than 90 felony charges, four different indictments. And the one he's now been uh, got this mugshot for is, is something that he can't possibly escape. He's probably going to do jail time if it can be held in time before the election and it raises a serious prospect that the leader of the free world is going to be effectively a crime boss oh. which is astonishing and, and jake within minutes uh he was using this picture wasn't he to uh say again that this is all a witch hunt that's right he came back to twitter for the first time in two years uh to basically we think uh, attempt to raise campaign funds off the back of this picture so this picture is actually good for Trump. He's promoting it. He's sticking it everywhere. We've seen the mugshot on mugs that are being sold. We've seen the mugshot on T-shirts that are being sold, apparently, for $34 a pop. And it really says so much about Trump, the fact that he's using what, most, what for most people would be a career-ending moment to transform it into more of a springboard, he hopes, for his future and for his future presidential bid. And the thing about Trump is that this is a paradigm that's being watched closely around the world. Authoritarian leaders and populist politicians all the way around the world, ever since Trump was elected all those years ago, have been following that new playbook, this new way of doing things where you can say one thing one day and say another thing the next day and forget all about what you said the previous day and people follow you because they are carried along by your charisma where you can break the rules and you can use mugshots like this for a, you know, to propel yourself forward rather than to, to I'm so to bring you proud back. of us as a nation that we kick someone like that out for parties. I just, <laughs> I just, I think this is brilliant. Before it got this bad. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but, 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 but the point of this is that uh, it, it works, doesn't it? Because every time uh, he's indicted, and it's what the fourth, fourth one now, um, his poll ratings go up. Well, it depends which polls you look at. Some of them have shown him dropping. 
within the Republican Party. Others show that he's being fairly stable. Um, so there's, there's polls and there's polls. But, you know, he's plainly trying to... What it does do, and it's, it's absolutely inarguable, is it energises his base. The fairly narrow part of American society, which is white and rust belt and believes itself to be the victim of other forces arraigned against them, you know, this is their guy and, and they're going to defend him. And it, it energises them to come out and perhaps get him very definitely that Republican nomination in the primaries. But what he's failing to see, I think, and it's because he's such an arrogant man, he's not able to comprehend this, is that he, what he's also doing with this, and when he does get on that primary nomination, is he's also going to energise the opponents, the opposing uh, voters. At the moment, they're quite apathetic about Joe Biden. Uh, and they're fairly apathetic about the prospect of this chap. But when he actually is one of the runners in a two-horse race, I firmly believe that... I mean, there's two-thirds of America disapprove of this guy. Mm. All the polls oh, yes. show. Okay. And so he is not going to win a presidential race, probably. It's the way things are looking now. And I really believe that, although he's energising his base, mm. he's energising his enemies, and there's more of them. Also turning off the swing voters, and, mm. that, and that's how elections are won. Yeah, let's just bring in the front of the mirror uh, again, that mugshot, uh, big fat lies, innocent, question mark, victim of a witch hunt, question mark, under 16 stone, question mark, <laughs> because we know that he had to be, be weighed and his height was... Well, that's right. Well, that's right. right. No, well, he was meant to be, wasn't he? And he, yeah. didn't, he didn't. Yeah, I mean, he's claiming to be two stone lighter than he was, as you pointed out, in the green room. Uh, in 2018, yeah. so he sometimes somehow it's seemed to have lost weight. No way, so that man's lost two stone. I mean, it just speaks, it speaks to his vanity, doesn't it? That this is the thing that he's concerned about. But he's, you know, he's weaponising this this mugshot, and it's appearing on his merch and all the rest of it. But uh, you know, his supporters will say that these district attorneys, they are politically motivated, and they're weaponising the law. Mm. Well, I mean, you know, in America, everything feels politicised by comparison to here. Juries yeah. are selected based on their political composition. I mean, not not officially, but you know what. I mean, yeah, but lawyers they do think elect in terms the DAs, of, don't of they? Uh, exactly, yeah, the judges and, and so on and so forth. And so, public life is much more politicised in America than it is here, and that just allows that feeds in to the narrative that Trump is able to craft. It provides a grain of truth he's able to build on yeah, uh, for his own benefit. What they don't base. accept was part of that is if you are a, a district attorney who has run, as the one in Georgia did, on the basis that I will get this guy because he has damaged our state constitution, uh, and he says that means it's politically motivated, it means that the voters have voted for that. And democracy says it's now time we go for this guy. Mm. And if, if they are politically motivated and they're, they're voters who have elected that DA to do that job, and that was part of their campaign, then that overrides the previous vote, which he didn't flip in well with anyway. Well, and Trump's, Trump's on trial for trying to overturn the public vote in 2020. He's yeah, not a big fan of voting. Yeah, it's a very interesting point, that. OK, well, listen, we'll park that there because I want to get this story in before we go to the break, at front of the eye. In fact, not, as, uh, not covered as extensively as I was expecting by the, uh, the front pages, but it's all about this, uh, this kiss at the end of the, uh, the Women's uh, Football World Cup um, Victory by Spain, of course. What, what, what do you make of it, Susie? I make it we don't have enough female editors, because then it would be on a few more front pages, I suspect. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the lady who was grabbed and kissed says it was against her will. She wasn't asked about it. She didn't consent. She didn't enjoy it, and it shouldn't have happened, and that he is making up the things he has since said to excuse himself. Um, he claims that she grabbed him and lifted him uh, bodily, which, if you look at the clip, is... <laughs> Clearly not what happened. He was caught on camera. He was caught... The whole thing's on camera. He grabbed the next woman and kissed her repeatedly too. And what you need to think about is if there's anyone at home, they well, you know, is it OK? Is it just Spanish being a bit expressive with themselves? Next to Rubiales is a lady official who is doing the same thing. She's uh, giving the players a hug, she's giving them a peck and well done you, and that is how he should have behaved. A big hug, a peck on the cheek, move along. Instead, he grabs her, he smooches her, he repeatedly smooches the next one, and he pretty much, we argued about this, he pretty much smacks her on the bum on the way past. Mm. Now, if a female official had done that to a male player, we would be having a discussion here about, you know, a female cougar or someone who's sexually just far mm -hmm. too aggressive, and a woman would be bad for doing this. Um, and also, I think we'd be saying that if a, if a man's... Uh, football team said we're not playing again until that woman gets sacked. We'll be again having a completely different discussion. I don't. I mean, I, I broadly agree with what you're saying, but there are some other other points I would add. 
I mean, the first, the first thing is that, you know, obviously Jenny Hermoso is right in saying that she didn't want it and he didn't ask her for permission, as he claimed. Um, obviously, he did the wrong thing in coming out in such a pugilistic, pugnacious way, saying, I will not resign, I didn't do anything wrong. He should have at least apologised for making her feel uncomfortable yeah. and say he didn't mean it. But I would say, in addition to that, though, that if you watch the footage, it appears on the face of it not to be a sexual act. It appears to be an exuberant overstepping of the boundaries. It's not something that I would do. It's not something that I respect or think is right. But it doesn't, see, it's not, it doesn't seem to me to be a grope or to be a sexually motivated thing. It seems more to be overstepping the boundaries. He's so happy, he's so buzzing, he's so exuberant. But he did grab his crotch earlier, didn't he? Yeah. Next to the but, Queen of Spain. And the issue and, is not so much... Was, I mean, that was very overt, wasn't he, it? He did, but, you know, I, I don't know. I, look, I'm, I'm not going to excuse the crotch no, grabbing. No, no, sure. no. Uh, but all I'm okay. saying is that he just... If you look at the clip, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's much, there's much more to it than that single frame yes, makes it look like. but I would point out to you chaps, that if someone's been exuberant and overstepped the boundaries, that's just about OK if he says sorry when he realises he's got Which it wrong. Which is what wrong. I said. I mean, he apologises. If what he yeah. does is come yeah. out and start swinging it around, yeah. then at that point you put your pens down. Do you do that down, as well? You put your pens <laughs> down and you go, no, son. Mm -mm -mm. And yeah. we're not doing that anymore. I mean, the lack and of apology make, was it's striking. The, it's yeah. the way he's handled it. The fact it's even become a row. Yeah, it's I mean, so he, he said... Um, clear, he said... Like, he, well, we've heard this before from, from uh, um, uh, somebody else. Uh, he is a victim of a witch hunt, he says, persecuted by fake feminism. Oh, yes, um, those naughty women doing it again. Still in post evil, tonight. The witching may, yeah. ability to be sexually assaulted. <laughs> Hello again, welcome back. Part two of the press preview. Jake and Susie are still with us. Um, the fallout from the Lucy Letby trial continues uh, in a depressing manner. Jake, front of the Daily Telegraph, uh, Lucy Letby may have killed our babies too. They've been speaking to two families. That's right. I mean, the context is that detectives are um, working through 4,000 potential cases that she might have been involved with. That's, a, that's a, a lot of cases and will take, obviously, a lot of time to trace the footprints of her career and see if any more cases come up. But The Telegraph has spoken to two mothers. Um, one of them is from Lithuania and doesn't speak very much English, and the other has learning difficulties, so both of them ha are, are vulnerable in, in different ways. Uh, one of them um, uh, said that Lucy Letby signed her baby's bapti baptism book with an apparently loving message, and the other said that she recognised Lucy from the media coverage. So, uh, you know, obviously extremely distressing and troubling and raises so many questions about not just how she could do it but who are other other who are, which other victims are out there yeah and also the the handling of the whole thing by uh, managers and bosses at the hospital and uh, the nhs chief executive amanda pritchard has said today that that we need to look at that as a matter of urgency don't we that, that managers management at hospitals should have the same uh, legislation covering them as doctors Yes, and I think that legislation has to go wider than that because obviously what's happened here, when, when the institution has had a, a threat, has had a warning, it's reacted as all institutions do, which is to base it completely ignore it and to, to brush it away and say it's not as much of a threat and it's, it's the person who's raising the issue that's the problem. And um, it's, it's exacerbated because this is an institution that deals with people in very vulnerable situations and small children, it's made this so much worse. But we've seen similar levels of denial at charities that have been accused of fraud, at, um, at the BBC over Jimmy Savile allegations, at the News of the World over phone hacking. As soon as these things come out, mm. wh whether you're whistleblowing in the private sector or the public sector, uh, people close ranks and say, no, no, and bat it away. There are recommendations for something called a Hillsborough Law, which would produce a public duty of candour for at least public officials, which would mean they are compelled to tell the truth. And it would uh, provide advocates and things for people that are affected by some of these problems. And that may help. And I think that's the kind of thing that actually should cover, to some extent, private sector as well. Because those of us or those who are watching at home who work in the private sector and who think, well, I spotted something at work that I don't really think is right. Mm. How many of us would have the complete confidence that if you went to your boss, it's the other guy that gets fired and not you yeah. who gets shuffled away as the troublemaker? Yeah, that's a really you know? good point. Whistleblowers have to have a proper legal protection in all walks of life. And then things like this don't happen. Yeah, 25,000 whistleblowers in the NHS uh, last mm. year alone. It's incredible, right. isn't it? Let's just finish um, very briefly, Jake, in uh, front of The Guardian. British Museum boss uh, stepping down over these thefts. 
That's right. I mean, this is just an astonishing story, and it's quite surprising that it took him so long to step back. Um, Hedvig, uh, Hartvig Fischer, his name is, he finally stepped down, although he was given a dossier of evidence in 2021, and it took him this long to actually step down. Well, there's been a didn't pandemic, do anything about you know, it. Yeah, lots of time on his hands, didn't he? <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, 1,500 objects, including antiquities from more than 1,000 years ago, have been sold reportedly on eBay. So his head has now rolled. More to come.